The annual Bankrupt Caribbean Folk Festival in Queens, New York, has evolved as a major event, attracting many ethnicities and key demographics. The event is dedicated to folk farms and folk culture. It stimulates nostalgia for those who grow up with it, provide learning opportunities for others who had no knowledge of it, and will help re-establish the importance and relevance of folk as viable, vibrant contributor to the Caribbean brand. What a life of achievement. We're so proud of you. Tell us what you want to say to this fine audience here. Well, I'd like to say I'm quite happy to be here at your college, who also gave me an honorary doctorate uh, a few years ago. And um, I'm still back and forth to Jamaica and the rest of the world. I've been traveling now for 65 years. and. Uh, <laughs> And it's, and it's been a pleasure. Open your heart and let these feelings in. To deny these emotions would be like a sin. Can't use love and true love I give to you. We made the stars. So let them never pass. Greetings, blessed. My name is Kalila Rose. I am a roots reggae artist. Um, I'm here at the Brata production. It's a yearly event and we do give thanks for Brata keeping roots and culture, reggae, Jamaican culture in the community. Hello everybody, this is Andy Basford here from the Bankra Festival at York College. People have been giving me free patties, free swag, there's beautiful music, I'm having a great time. I feel like Yep, my name is Andrew Clark. I'm founder and executive director of Brata Productions. We're a non-profit performing arts company. Uh, we've been around for nine years, celebrating our 10th anniversary next June. Um, and today, we did our fourth annual Bankrupt Caribbean Folk Festival. We were featuring Caribbean folk culture, music, art on a main stage. You know, we wanted to bring it forward because a lot of the times when we do culture, we kind of push it aside and we, we them kind of catch up on one program, you know, and put it on the side stage. We're never there up there with the big reggae and dancehall artists. So I felt it my duty to give culture where, where our music started, you know, folk music, where, where Jamaican music started, you know, before we had live instruments, we were using our voices and bodies to make music. So it was really just about showcasing our culture in, a, in fine fashion and showing people that we can celebrate with culture, we can do it nice, and it's not just a situation where when in Independence time come around and Eros day we we, we rap with Edna Bandana and go they go sing Kami Haki. You know, we really should revere our culture and represent it honorably. So that was the intention of today, sir.
children in Africa should not suffer and die because their hospital ward is too small to accommodate them. We join global gospel recording artists, Papasan, Bishop H. Curtis Douglas, and the DBC Choir for this star-studded benefit concert. 100% of proceeds go directly to building the hospital. Bishop H. Curtis Douglas, Senior Pastor of Daybar Bethlehem Cathedral, and I'm thrilled to be here tonight with Love Without Walls as we celebrate what we're doing in Ghana and building the hospital in Sahum. This concert is to help build uh, and take care of the children of Sahum, Ghana. We are thrilled to be here. DBC is here. People from all over are here. It's going to be a fantastic night of singing and ministry. God's going to meet us, and we're doing something that's going to outlast us because we're contributing to people halfway around the world. We are a nonprofit organization and all volunteer nonprofit organization, I should add. Uh, we're all volunteers, so no one gets paid. The organization was formed in 2014 when I went to Africa and I saw the dire need of the children there in, the, in a small hospital ward with 24 beds. Uh, serves a population of 180,000 uh, folks. As a result, a lot of the children are turned away and, and many die. I came back to the States and I got very ill. I was admitted to uh, New York Winthrop Hospital. Uh, got very ill, they thought I had Ebola, then they thought it was AIDS or HIV. It turned out it was malaria. Hit in my body for uh, six, 59 days. Uh, had congestive heart failure, I had pneumonia. They thought I was gonna die. But one night when I was on my bed, I got this vision that I got ill so that I could uh, feel the suffering of the children in Sahum, Ghana and that I was a form an, an organization and name it Love Without Walls. So that's how Love Without Walls began. My name is Dijon Thomas, and I'm here from Queens, New York. Uh, I moved to Kingston, Jamaica, where I met Papa San and finally moved back to Florida, where I now minister at his church, Our Father's Kingdom Ministries in uh, Margate. We're here tonight to support Love Without Walls. It's an awesome cause, and I'm so glad of the support that came out. We came from Florida, we fly back for church tomorrow, but we're here tonight to serve God, to praise Him, and to bless His name for a wonderful cause. The journey in gospel is an amazing journey. I've learned so much over the past 20 years, you know, being a gospel artist, seven album man on my belt to this date. But the good news is that God is always with us. I love what you're doing because you're building a hospital in Ghana, you know, to have, to have young, young kids, and millions of kids died, never have nobody to treat them or to look after them. You know, and I'm glad to be a part of something that is so profitable and so productive. And that's why I want to be a part of this movement to build not just one hospital but many more so we can see people able to you know get the proper treatment that they truly need you know and I just thanking God for, for giving me this opportunity and this privilege to be a part of it. Caribbean New York City Restaurant Week 
beginning today, June 17 to June 24, celebrates the cultural experience of Caribbean cuisine as a tourism experience in the Caribbean and New York City as part of the Caribbean Heritage Month. Wyatka, one of the largest organizations promoting and sharing Caribbean heritage in New York. Alongside Sugarcane Restaurant, hosted the fifth annual launch of Eat Caribbean New York City Restaurant Week. Eat Caribbean stands for Caribbean Restaurant Week. It's our fifth year. We would like to celebrate all the culinary aspects of foodies. So this year we're specializing in and, and featuring a lot of our chefs and our mixologists. So right now we had Sugar Cane and we have Ariel who made a dis delicious drink called Tabanka. So again, please join us June 17th to the 24th for Eat Caribbean. My name is Khadija and I'm here on behalf of Strong Day Creations and I am modeling Circe's for the Labor Day 2018. So welcome to Caribbean Restaurant Week. We're here with Saucy, well known in the community. So tell us a little bit about your experiences here in New York City and your uh, recognition that you're receiving tonight. Okay, well, um, I've been in the business 23 years now and it is an, uh, an absolute pleasure and honor to be honored by the Senator for being the cultural ambassador for the Caribbean here in New York. I thank you so much for the, for the, for the award and I intend to do a lot more where community and, and a lot of you know, charitable organizations and events are concerned. Um, I cried because I mean I was, I was honored and it took me 23 years to come from where I'm from Trinidad and Tobago to be honored in New York. I was, I was recognized in New York City so that's a big deal. Confidence has no competition. Bikini Under the Bridge, Swimsuit, the Breast Cancer Awareness Show, and a model casting call at Milk River. I'm your host, Lawman, and I'm in the field for Come Chat With Me today. And we're broadcasting live from Milk River right here on Atlantic Avenue in Brooklyn, New York, where we're doing the live casting, the runway casting, the model casting for Bikini Under the Bridge 2018. Last year, 2017, we were right there in Dumbo, where we had a fantastic show at Bikini Under the Bridge. This year is going to be no different. Only thing is going to be greater. The models are fantastic. We have some fantastic judges who are here to choose who will actually make the cut and be on that runway on July 8th for Bikini Under the Bridge 2018. I'm here with Sydney and she's one of the many models who came here at Milk River today for the casting call for Bikini Under the Bridge. What was that experience like for you, Sydney? It was an awesome experience. I love the inclusion of the other girls, seeing girls who looked like me and seeing myself represented in the judges as well. Awesome. How did you hear about it, may I ask? Um, it was actually recommended to me by my sister. By your sister? Yes. Oh, that, that's great. Yeah. Are you, have you ever done anything like this before? Because you did fantastic. I thought you were Thanks great. Thanks so much. This is actually my first casting awesome. call, but over the past year and a half, I've been working on my portfolio. Awesome. Yeah. If you were to be one of the five, I know a lot of girls came yeah. out today, but they can only choose five today. They can only select five. If you were to be one of the five, how would that make you feel? Um, it would definitely motivate me to train even harder for Showtime and to be a part of it next year, definitely. And I mean, and if you don't get selected, how would that make you feel? <laughs> Same thing here. I'm staying optimistic. <laughs> I'm with the proprietor himself, none other than J.R. Giddens. You know, J.R., you, I know you've been doing this for many, many, many years, over a decade, if I'm, if I'm not right. mistaken. Um, what has it been like so far, you know, in terms of preparation for Bikini Under the Bridge 2018 in general? Well, preparation has been rigorous. Why? Um, 
This is the second year we're doing Bikini Under the Bridge without my wife and partner, who we're, we have this awareness, the breast cancer awareness. You know, she lost her fight uh, with breast cancer. So every year you want to do better. You want to keep that legacy growing. So you want to put in the extra bells, the extra whistles. You want to really bring the attention. So it's been a lot of work. It's been um, a lot of dedication. And it's been uh, pretty exciting. Great, great, great. I, I know that there's a lot going on in terms of preparation, you know, behind the scenes. And one of the critical factors behind the scenes is actually choosing the models for the runway, the catwalk. Uh, you have already selected some. Today we're at Milk River. We, you have the, the awesome task, along with some judges, of selecting around five to eight other models. What are you satisfied with the turnout today? Well, um, you never complain. You know, I am happy with the girls that came out to uh, walk for the show. And it's, it's a process. Sometimes right. you, you see a girl and you don't see everything right away. But when you look back at it on camera, okay, uh, you recognize that there is talent there. Right. So um, what we do, we carefully assess each girl and um, then we make a decision. What's important, right, is um, we're here in Brooklyn, the mecca of the USA. So what's important is diversity. When you have an attendance of women, men, you must have a diverse group of models on the runway that they could identify with different body types, different tones. And uh, that goes into it, okay, because not only do you want to put on a good show, okay, you want to be able to sell the apparel. So uh, the diversity in body type and culture is very important. Jackie has one of the most difficult jobs. You have to choose roughly five out of the many girls that we've seen today. Yes. What is that experience like for you? Like, what's the process? Walk me through the process. Well, um, what we do is first we look to see how they walk, if they have confidence, um, they're smiling. Um, you know, it basically how they feel on the stage in their swim swimwear. So for us, it's um, it actually was fun. It was easy. The girls are all beautiful. They're all some you know needs work, and you know some are professionals. But it was a, it was a great experience. I saw the way in which you interact with. The, the ladies today mm -hmm. um, it shows that you are about the business you know what is required walk me through the process of making the selection from the perspective of not only a model but a runway coach um, so the process is uh, basically we're looking for confidence uh, fierceness um, I'm personally looking for etiquette and um, professionalism if you will right, right, right. so I kind of just want them to exhibit confidence on the runway right. so I'm kind of just looking for girls to be a little more humble and you know be like a sponge and you know right. want to learn and want to do better right. Stay connected with Come Chat With Me. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Thanks for watching Come Chat With Me. Tune in each and every Sunday right here on CIN. Busy Signal returns to Groove in Inza Park on June 24th. We leave you with a clip from its last year's performance. See you next week. Simply kills.